The shadows laying thick in the library, coupled with the peace and the smell of the books, reminded me of the more contemplative parts of Namra's great temple. It wasn't quite like coming home, but it was as close as I was ever likely to get again. I gave the aisles a once-over for occupants. Merchants and members of the gentlemen's club, whom the library catered to and were the only ones who could afford to support the high price of paper, sometimes kept weird hours. That's when I found Harad, the master librarian, wandering quietly among the rows of books and checking to see that everything had gotten back to its proper place after the departure of the day's visitors. Even in the dim light, the many complex spells that wrapped him round made him easy to spot with mage sight. Once I'd made sure we were alone, I got ahead of him and stood quietly in plain view, waiting for him to look up and see me. After a few moments, his eyes lifted and met mine, and he waved. You're up late. I'm an old man, and I don't sleep as well as I used to. I like to take the opportunity to check on my charges and see that they're resting better than I am. You don't look that old to me. But I am old. Older by far than anyone most people will ever meet. I exclude you, of course, young Arl. You walk strange roads and see much that is hidden from the ordinary run of folk. <laughs> How old are you, Harad? <laughs> Do you really want to know? Truly? Curiosity is one of my besetting sins. That curiosity is what brought me here the first time. A decade ago, in the year that butcher Ashvik, may he burn eternally in the deepest of hells, was slain. I remember it like it was yesterday. And in the long book that is my life, that is not so far from the truth. All right, curious boy, I will answer you in a few minutes. Come back to my kitchen and I will make us tea. Oh, now you're teasing me. No, I just prefer to tell things in their right time. And the right time for this tale is still a short way off. Have it your way, old man. For far more years than you've been alive, I have done precisely that. I see no reason to change my ways now. I grinned. After Triss, Harad was the nearest thing I had to a friend these days. Unlike Faye or Jarek or any of my other Tianese associations, there was no flow of debts between us, neither of blood nor of money, just a mutual interest in books and all that lay between their covers. We'd first met because of that. I had snuck into the library one night because I felt the need to get away from my assignment to kill Ashvik and let a story lift me out of myself for a while. He'd come in then and gently questioned me about my presence in his library and my intent. And also, by the way, how did I like the book? Ever since then, I'd had a sort of unofficial library membership and one person in Tien whom I could talk to without the weight of anything beyond mutual interest. Harad poured the hot water over the powdered tea and carefully stirred with a whisk. An unusual method for Zahn, it spoke of foreign origins in a way much more forceful than Harad's Kadeshi name. It also reminded me of the Efik ritual, a thought I pushed aside forcefully. There. That is what I have been waiting for. It signals the right time for this story. Which is? My birthday. With the tolling of the midnight bell, I enter into my 611th year. Your what? Don't give me that look, Arl. You don't feign shock well. The teacher who trained you to it emphasized the open mouth too much. And you have a touch of the ham in you which pushes the whole thing just a shade too far. Shock's not really a good look on you anyway. It undermines the whole tragic but dangerous image. I'd suggest you stick with the eye twitch and then a quick slide back to the blank stare of the gambler. Like now. It plays to your strengths. But I am shocked. 600 years old. That's awfully hard to believe. No, it's not. We both know that I'm a sorcerer and a powerful one. It's a requirement of the job here. The Esmir holds the largest and most valuable collection of books in all of Zon, mostly because it is private and thus free of the censoring impulses of the generations of Zani royals. Like any sorcerer, my life is tied to my familiars. As my companions is the longer span, we have both measured our threads to his. Unlike my dead buddy Locke and the Spit Adder, where the lengthening of life went the other way, well, right up until Maylene killed him. I wondered what the nature of Harad's familiar was, but knew better than to ask. If he'd wanted to tell me, he would have. 
Don't pretend that you don't know how that bonding works. If nothing else, you've read up on the topic. I know. I lent you the books. You know what I am, don't you? I set my untouched tea aside as Triss pressed himself hard against my back. But Harad simply shrugged and smiled. Since you ask, yes. Though I would not have raised the issue had you chosen to leave it lie. I have known it from the first moment you snuck into my library. A week before you rid the world of King Ashvik the sixth and hopefully last of that name. It's in the way you walk and the way you hold your head when you lie. Techniques passed down through dozens of generations. Oh? Three hundred years ago... Servants of your Namra asked me to help out with the training of her blades. At the time, I was running a theatre company in Varia, and had been for perhaps fifty years before that. The masters wanted to add some refinements to their techniques, and who better to ask than an acting master? I had become bored with the theatre at that point, and thought that teaching assassins might make for an entertaining change of scene. I was right, and stayed for a decade or three. What happened? Triss assumed his dragon shape and settled on the floor by my feet. I suppressed an urge to whap him on the nose for exposing our secrets. That pot was already a decade spilled, if Harad was being honest with us. I got bored and left the temple. It was a bit too much like working with the acting company, really. Then I moved on to another career, and another after that. So far, I think I like librarian the best. I've been here for a hundred and twenty years, and might well stay a hundred more. Now that we've dealt with that, what brings you to see me tonight? You can't be done with that necromancer book already. You don't read that fast or that steadily. It cuts into your drinking time. No, I haven't finished it. It's both a little too gruesome and a little too silly for me at the moment, though though I'd like to try it again someday. I was going to pretend that I had read it and ask you to find me something on what's been happening with the royal family and the succession since the death of Ashvik. I've been going out of my way to avoid as much news of the royal court as I could. But I didn't want to admit that to you, as it might give something away. So I was going to make up a cover story about a new client, but somehow that all seems a little ridiculous now. Instead, I'm just going to tell you what I really want to know. Why I want to know it, and and everything that's happened so far. Then I'll see if you can point me at the right information. After listening diligently to my debacle, with helpful pointers from Triss wherever I failed to mention a mistake I made... Harad handed over a thick pamphlet. It was written in Kudamian and translated to Thovik, The Rise of the Bastard King. This is banned in Tien as propaganda, which it is, of course, but with a core of truth. The banning means that it's in high demand here at the library. Uh, Please don't keep it too long, or if it should come up, let anyone know where you got it. Everything you want to know about the Marchand girls you will find in there. Thank you. But there's no need to worry about my returning it late. I don't have the time to waste. If it's all right with you, I'll just park myself in the third floor reading room I use as a foyer, and it'll never leave the building. If that's what you want. What I want is to go to my fallback and sleep the night and day around, then get so drunk I forget this whole stupid job ever happened. (laughs) But what I need to do is make a serious fade out while I figure out my next move. That means staying away from any place that might already have been compromised and minimizing the chance that anyone will pick up my trail again. So assuming I got here clean, my best bet is to hold still until it's time for the next move, and then to move quickly and decisively. Harad gestured toward the stairs. Then after you.